trying to beat that summer heat? Well, in this episode, we're gonna talk about the relationship between the sun, the roof deck, and the venting, and how I use cardboard to make it all work together and more efficiently to keep your home cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. Welcome to High Peaks Home. In this attic space, I came in here to help solve a problem for a customer. And they had mentioned to me that they had a stain in their ceiling. And so I went and took a look at that, and that ended up being a plumbing problem. If you wanna see what that was, you can go check out my buddy Brian's channel, The Fix-It Guy, and he can show you what I did there. But for here, when I was in here fixing that, I noticed some deficiencies in how this house was insulated and how I can correct it for them to eliminate both the ice damming and make the house far more efficient. So we're gonna get into to some science here and some theory on roofing and breathing and how houses are supposed to react with the sunshine and with their own heat loss from internal. So if you're interested in all that, stick around because it's going to get pretty good. Fiberglass, it doesn't do a great job of insulating. There's always going to be gaps. So you have pipe penetrations going on. You have can lights over here where the two ends come together. If they're not perfect, they can leak heat. And when they got installed, if they got installed too cramped into a space, that's a problem. So all these little things are kind of adding up, right? And could they provide enough heat loss to produce um, ice damming? Absolutely. But one key problem that I noticed, this wall behind me, on the other side of it is a bedroom. And that bedroom has been known to get really hot in the summertime. <clears throat> Now, between that fact and best practices for installing insulation were not accomplished in this space, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that wall is not properly insulated for the space it is. Maybe the builder thought, well, it's just an interior wall, I don't have to insulate it. Well, non-conditioned space, you've gotta insulate. Now, if we're gonna ton of heat from there and all these little penetrations here, you're definitely gonna have a great combination for heat loss and ice damming, especially here in the Northeast. So how do we fix it? Well, we go into a little bit of building science here. Just so you know, I'm a student of building science. I love knowing what we did yesterday and how it affects tomorrow. And I took some principles from that to create this video, but I did misuse some terminology. I used the term radiation where I should have just said thermal gain. So if you wouldn't mind you know, substituting every time you hear me say radiation with thermal gain, I'd really appreciate it. This is the south facing roof system, okay? So this is gonna have the highest amount of heat coming into this space, especially during the winter time, but in the summertime, this is where it's gonna get the majority of its heat. Now, this is the middle of July. We're in Lake Placid, New York. So it is a little more temperate, but let me tell you, yesterday afternoon, it was blistering hot in here. Because <sighs> yesterday is when I fixed this plumbing problem and did what we're about to do today on the north side of the building. So hopefully, when I get close to the end here, this system will be hot enough where we can start getting some temperature draws and really show you the difference between what I'm trying to do here. But now for the science side. As the sun beats down, on this surface, we know that it's gonna get really hot. Now, air is just as lazy as water, right? So whatever the easiest space to go into is where water flows. Hot air, cold air is the same way. It's lazy. Now we know that when hot air, or when air gets hot, it rises, right? So the theory of the way this system was laid out, <clears throat> is that you have cold air coming in from your soffit vent through that pink baffle down there, and then it'll come in and then go up to the ridge line. Well, yes, that will happen, but it takes this entire cavity to get completely saturated with hot air. And because air is lazy, so this gets super hot, so the air here gets hot, and then hot air is either gonna rise or it's gonna to go towards a low pressure or cooler temperature. And so then the heat 
will fill this whole cavity before it starts to rise. Because the way it exits the building is just that little tiny ridge vent at the very top. And so when it's easier for the hot air to consume this whole area than it is to go out that little tiny vent. So what do we do? We force it to go to that ridge vent. And the way we do that is you can do it, well, I know of three different ways of doing it. One, you can put nailer strips in the sides of your rafters and then nail in a piece of plywood to go across that to create an air gap between the roof deck and that piece of sheathing that you put in. That's the most expensive way and a very thorough way. It's a, I've done it before in really large houses and you can spend thousands of dollars doing that and it works beautifully and the spray foamer will love you for it. Or you can take these pink baffles that are installed here and go all the way up to the ridge line. Now that's the fastest way of doing it. The problem with that is, or a gap between the pink baffle and the rafter and allows some sheathing to be exposed. So the cheapest and I'd say it's, it's one of the better solutions is just take some cardboard, right? Take cardboard. You're going to bend it up one face of the rafter. You can go across the, the, the surface here and then come down this side. You just staple it on. It's not a, you know expensive process at all. It is time consuming. It is way slower than putting the pink in, not as slow as doing all the woodwork if you wanted to do it that way. So, you know, you gotta balance out what you're wanting to do. On this side, we've already installed the cardboard and you can see that it's just folded on one side, stapled off across the space and then down and stapled on this side, which creates a nice little air gap from the cardboard to the roof deck. And then you can look way up there and that is the ridge vent. So we're trying to get all this hot air that's in here through there. And I'll go ahead and seal this off next. It'll look like this. So you want it sealed rafter to rafter and to ridge, but not blocking the ridge vent. You're finding value in this video, please hit that share button and you can email it, you can put it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to help spread this message so that we can impact our communities together. Thank you. So by installing the cardboard, you create that air gap. Now, after it's all done, I'm gonna go ahead and call a spray foamer in. Wayne's gonna come in here, spray it all out and bring it up to code and we'll have this whole space completely insulated and that air gap will exist. Now, the sun's solar radiation is gonna come into the roof sheathing and come through in, into that cavity. It's gonna hit that cardboard and then it's gonna hit that spray foam and then the spray foam is gonna block all that radiation from coming into this cavity here. So now this will become conditioned space. So when that cavity gets superheated, what's gonna happen is convection is gonna take over. Now, I was talking earlier about air being lazy, right? So the air can't come into this cavity and get this area super hot anymore. So it wants to go somewhere, wants to go to that low pressure. Now that cavity is gonna become higher pressure than the air on the outside. And it's, it's hot, so it wants to go higher. And what happens is you end up creating a vacuum inside this cavity and or convection. So cold air is gonna come in from your soffits, come into this cavity, and because the hot air is escaping that ridge vent that we just showed you. And now what happens is that insulation doesn't even have to work that hard. Because you have cold air coming in from the bottom, you have the hot air escaping through the top, and now your R value, actually, actually I can't say your R value increases, but the efficiency of your insulation does increase by having that ability for the air to escape. <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I, I really geek out on the whole science side of things. I really enjoy that side of it. So 
if I missed something or it didn't quite make sense, please put it in the comments and I'd love to explain it to you further. All right, well, before it gets too hot in here, I need to get the rest of this blocked up. So when preparing for the spray foam, you want to make sure that you expose this plate right here. This is the top plate of your exterior wall. You want to make sure that they can spray continuously from that top plate, up this block, and then top of your baffle. I also want to show, if you're looking at your insulation to see if it was installed correctly, these are a couple of things that are not done correctly. With fiberglass, you see how it's compressed right there, there, and there? When you compress the fiberglass, you get rid of its ability to actually do its job. Now, this is a difficult scenario to get this insulated properly, but you can do it. Now, directly next to it, you can see that hole right there. So hot air is coming right out of there into this space. You have compression there because the insulation was jammed in. So that's not correct. And then, you know, just right down the line. They didn't do any of these correctly. Hey. So in order to get it done correctly, after you shove it in there, you just kind of massage it a little bit. Work it in, pick up on it. And there you go, nicely done. But for our case, we don't want it like that. We actually want that fully exposed. So I'll just come in here, peel that back, fold it under, because now this insulation is not going to do anything once we get this area spray foamed. There she is. We've got it all blocked up <clears throat> or gapped in or, you know, baffled. <laughs> Let's call it baffled. Now to any of you out there, <clears throat> that are thinking, all right, John, you're telling me this, my builder's telling me that, and you know, this other guy on YouTube is saying something else. Well, to that I say, the proof is in the pudding. I love data, I am a data-driven person, and I don't make decisions without the data. And let me show you the actual thermal imaging of this space. On the right there, you can see that you're at low 80s to mid 80s. Now that's where we have the cardboard baffles. You can see where there's an, uh, an overlap. And it just continually gets a little bit warmer as you get towards the top. Now the top there, I don't have the baffle installed and it jumps right up to 102 degrees. We have about 16 degrees spread there. That's amazing. And it's just with cardboard, just with cardboard. Something you can do at home. I'm so glad to be out of that attic. 
and outside in a cool breeze. It's 70 some degrees today. It's beautiful here. And even with a cool day like today, that sun beating down on that sheathing, man, 102 until we put the cardboard in and she dropped right down to 82 to 86, somewhere in there. What a difference. Now, when I transverse between the space we worked in and the space above the garage that's not conditioned, it is so much hotter now in that other space. And maybe in the future, we'll do that space too. Well, that all said, oh, do you like what you see behind you? I built this a couple years ago, before I ever started YouTube. And if you're ever interested in going for a little tour of this, let me know. Put a comment down below. Until next time, thanks for stopping by High Peaks Home.